it's Manny from the Untitled Manny and Mark Show and the Sharpshooters Wrestling Podcast. What you're about to watch is something a little different for our channel. We are tackling the awkward conversation about race and wrestling. Over the series of videos, you will see various members of our community answer questions regarding race, which myself, Marcus and Eric will answer at the end of the video. The purpose of this video is not to call out or accuse anyone or company, but to open up a conversation about race and how it comes across amongst our fans who watch wrestling. Uh, sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, mostly when I started watching wrestling back in like, I want to say like 94, 95, like, you know, they had a bit of differences. Like, I think Yokozuna was really big at that time and he was like Samoan, but that's really only like the big colored person that was doing it. And they, it's even messed up because like Yokozuna is Samoan. Let's let's break the cafe for a second. My guy is Samoan. He's part of the Anawahi family, but they portrayed him as a Japanese sumo wrestler. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy to me. But like, um, you know, uh, other than The Rock, when we get there, Booker T took a long time to be world champion in WCW as well and all that stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, think about it like this. David Arquette, a, a non-wrestler at the time, won the world title before Booker T did. That's crazy. That's crazy to me. We didn't have, and Farouk, um, or Ron Simmons, he had a world title back in like the 80s. He was like the first world black champion in, in WCW. When he got to WWE, he was in prime position to become WWE champion, but never pulled the trigger on him. And he had a fantastic group in Nation of Domination, which was trying to be representative of, you know, what what uh, the black community at least was trying to fuck um Kai and Tai was trying to get um the Japanese legit Japanese wrestlers out there their name like that um we even go back to like uh Eddie Guerrero trying to build the LWO the Latino World Order in WCW at the time trying to you know get that going um not so much the FBI and ECW but like you know even still like you know oh uh you know the, everybody was trying to get their little bit of representation because all we got was Bald, at that time, bald white men with black tights, with blue eyes, they were running the show. And unless you were white, unless you were tall and white, unless you was, you know, you you was not getting a world title. So that, that's that's what it pertains to me. But like, as opposed to the question, back to the question, did it influence the way that I watch wrestling? Yes and no. When it pertains to influencing me, whenever I, I got excited when I got to see certain wrestlers wrestle because they did look kind of sort of like me. Um, obviously I'm not the darkest because I'm of mixed descent. I'm black Puerto Rican Dominican, but like, uh, like seeing like a Savio Vega on TV is like, Oh, okay. We got, you know, people out there that that's like us or whenever you see like, uh, uh, Farouk or the nation of domination, like, you know, Oh, them, them guys are for us. Uh, Ahmed Johnson is another name that, like people don't throw out there um me growing up as a teenager seeing guys like jay lethal elix skipper uh consequences creed now xavier woods kofi kingston freaking um uh there's like so much booker t stevie ray um like it's just it's good to see it's great to see and we got to get represented um i'm trying to think of black wrestlers in ecw new jack when we see new jack killed is on on television it's like okay yeah we gangster we like that like you know what i'm saying so that that's the influence of you know how it did as opposed to how it didn't um for me it's just like the character has to speak out to itself i think what held back a lot of uh the guys that got to be on television and whatever not was their character work like Great wrestlers, shitty characters, or stereotypical characters. And I don't know if that's the fault of, you know, the wrestler or the promotion, but like, you know, nobody was complaining when Jay Lethal was the black machismo, but it took, it took him to be the black machismo to even get like a big push because he was just this great X division wrestler. And, you know, nobody was clamoring for him and everything like that. As soon as this became black machismo oh he's the macho man he's like a black macho man now 
But why is he got to be a black macho man? Why can't be the first Jay Lethal? Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. It is, it is, it is what it is when it pertains to that. Not when I was younger. And, um, I mean, I've been watching wrestling for close to 30 years. So I would say, uh, no. I mean, I, I enjoy it for what it is, which is uh, live action theater. Or, uh, as Brian Danielson said, uh, combat theater. Yeah, that's, that pretty, that pretty much nails it on the head. I think professional wrestling and race, uh, they ended up playing a factor much later as I got older. And Honest answer? Yeah, it, it, it kind of has. Like, not at first. When I first started watching wrestling, didn't really bother me. You know, my favorites were Sting, The Ultimate Warrior, uh, guys like that. Um, it was even to the point where when we played wrestling, I wanted to be Sting or The Ultimate Warrior. And my friends were like, well, maybe you should be Bad News Brown or, or The Junkyard Dog. And I really didn't understand why they suggested that at first. But then as I got older... Uh, I guess I was about 15, maybe 16. Uh, it was the year Farouk first introduced the Nation of Domination. And he did this interview where he said, we're good enough to be, uh, we're good enough to be Intercontinental Champion or we're good enough to be the U.S. Champion, but we are never, we have never been good enough to be the World Champion. And at first I was like, because, you know, I kind of knew what was going on. So at first I was like, but, but you, you were the first world black world heavyweight champion and then i started thinking about it it's like wait he's the only black world heavyweight champion he might be right and it was like why isn't somebody that looks like me good enough to be world champion why do we have to settle for intercontinental or or um u.s champ or tv champ or whatever why aren't we good enough to be the world champion so for a while and i guess a little bit still to this day, that kind of bothers me, you know? Like, why aren't we good enough to to be the face of the champion? Or I should say face of the company, you know? Why? why? Doesn't, doesn't make sense. And then even, I forget who said it, but somebody said, you know, we dominate majority of professional sports, be it NBA or NFL or, you know, whatever. But why aren't we good enough to I guess you say dominate professional wrestling. It 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 just it baffles my mind. It doesn't I ain't gonna necessarily say it bothers me, but it does baffle my mind. It confuses me. Um race has never influenced the way I watch wrestling, to be honest. I mean that's probably easy for me to say. I'm a, a middle aged white guy who <laughs> I've watched wrestling since I was a kid. And as I've got older it's it's become more obvious to me that there aren't the same kind of opportunities gifted to black wrestlers as there are white wrestlers that's that's obvious and i think that maybe comes from the top tier people in the company not that they're racist as such but they're superstars when they were growing up there are there are the, they they created the they created hulkamania they created the ultimate warrior these guys they were the, the kind of the big roars and I suppose in a lot of the ways a lot of the fans that came to wrestling were white guys because they probably had a bit more money I don't know if we talk about my ass completely, but it, it's never influenced the way I watch wrestling at all. It's it's been wrestling for me has always been the way it has been. So not when I was a kid because I'm 44, and so I'm coming up during like the heyday of Hulk Hogan and Macho Man. So definitely not when I was a kid, but like during the Attitude Era, where you would have like Nation of Domination and The Rock, and then on WCW you would have Harlem Heat. I did take notice. So not when I was a kid, but definitely in my adult age, yes, it does. I would say, yeah. Uh, cause, okay, because I would say, like, what really... Okay, going back to, like, you know, I know we were talking about Booker T earlier, but going back to when Harlem Heat were, um, you know, were, were dominating the, the, the tag division, that was something that, to me, was really cool to see because at that time, that was, that was relatively almost new to me. Um, I started watching wrestling in the summer of 2000, oh, 2000, wow. The summer of 1992, I started watching pro wrestling. And so between that time, like let's say like 92 up until like 96, 97, you know, I didn't really see 
too many black, you know, I didn't really see too many, you know, black wrestlers who were on top. Like I said, I, you know, I would see Coco Beware every week getting beat by Damian Demento. You know what I mean? So seeing Harlem Heat out there on WCW winning the tag titles and, you know, doing the Harlem hangover and doing like, you know, the, uh, you know, you know doing like the, the, the sidekicks and all that good stuff and everything like that and just dominating the out of their opponents. Sorry for my language, but I'm dominating the heck out of their opponents was like, oh my God, like not only are they awesome, not only do they look cool, but they're also, this, this is a black tag team. It's a black tag team looking this good, man. <laughs> like this is really cool, you know what I'm saying? So so like that was like, that's something that, that really stuck to me, you know, that like really stuck to me and I could like kind of like hang my hat on in terms of like, you know, how proud I was, you know, to be able to see that that type of representation take place. Um, you know, with uh, with Harlem Heat. Now, in terms of the overall, though, like not overall, because, you know, like I said, like, I came to become a wrestling fan in the summer of 92. And so all like most of the wrestlers I was seeing were like, you know, were, were white men who were dominating, you know, left and right and whatnot and everything. I, thought, I, I remember like when, when Yoko Zuno was on top, I thought that was really cool because I because, you know, uh, I, I I fell for the kayfabe okie doke, and I really thought he was from Japan. So I was like, "Well, I'm I'm, a, I'm like, that's cool. They got a guy from Japan who would win everything." But then I found he was Samoan. I'm like, "Okay, well, that's still equally as kind of cool that you know he's a Samoan and he's dominating. So that's 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 that's, that's really awesome." But personally, though, seeing um, Harlem Heat do what they did, though, I thought was really was really great. But um, but that didn't. But, but just because there was a lack of black representation who were, you know, winning championship belts and whatnot and everything like that. Uh, just because that was, that was kind of lacking that department um, in pro wrestling in general, that didn't hinder me from, from watching the product. That, that didn't, like, you know, make me say, like, in all moments, for, you know, forget pro wrestling. I'm not going to, you know, watch. I just love it because I love, I love how, story, how storytelling develops. And I just love the art of storytelling. And to me, wrestling is, like, the greatest way of telling a story. But um, but yeah, but like but seeing the Harlem Heat do what they did, and even like when Ahmed Johnson came in and he won the IC t- title, that was a that was a really big deal. Um, seeing um, I, I wasn't I wasn't uh, a fan when when uh, Ron Simmons won the world title in WCW, but reading about that you know later on, I thought it was really great. And even like I remember when uh, I remember when uh, <laughs> when Sheldon Benjamin, I believe it was Sheldon Benjamin. I believe it was Sheldon Benjamin. Yeah, when he beat, I want to say he beat Chris Jericho at the first Taboo Tuesday. I know some of the uh, some of the wrestling historians in the group are uh, are will will, cor- will correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe when when Sheldon Benjamin beat Chris Jericho for the IC belt at the first Taboo Tuesday back in 2004, I want to say it was. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, th- I remember I remember a, a good friend of mine, Sam. I remember he texted me that night. Cause he was watching it somewhere. He's watching it at some bar because he was like living out of state or whatever. He was like, "Man, show me just won the IC belt. We got a black IC champion. Man, this is what, that's what I'm talking about." You know what I mean? He was just hype. He was hype, and he was like, "Because we got a black IC champion." And you know, we've had black IC champions before, like an Ahmed Johnson, or whatever. I think, but that I mean, but seeing that reaction from that moment, you know, says a whole lot. You know, like when it comes to how um, representation really does resonate. Um, it really helped, you know, people. So, so yeah, that 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 was uh, th- that's something that stuck out to me, though. So we've heard from everyone, and then the purpose of this question is um, race was. Inf- I was influenced by race last summer when I was watching the Euros, where it changed pretty much how I view everything. But in, most importantly, wrestling at the same time. It was that's kind of where this question came about. It was more what happened to those young boys uh, playing for England in the summer. I knew they were going to get racially abused on online and everything the moment that happened because it was happening in the premiership before that. But then I started thinking more widely is like that happens everywhere. Like as soon as someone of color um, does something wrong or something, it immediately becomes, especially in Britain, you, you're no, you're no longer British or that color. You're just Asian at that point, or you're just black at that point. You're not, that Britain or British part of you is almost like it's stripped away. So that's where this question came from. So I, for me, it, it's influenced me quite well, quite impactly. Like as a child, it didn't. I think that you get that blindness of a child. It's like um, I don't, I don't know what that. Con- it's, like, it's like a bias, uh, childhood innocence. I think that's what it is. 
there's an innocence to it where you you're not aware of it but then as you get old as i got older you you became more you become more aware of it as you've experienced it yourself and uh when you experience yourself you start seeing things a lot more differently so um that that's how i that's how i that's why i came up with this question that's how that's how i feel how how do you feel like marcus um for the most part i think it has always uh, affected me in a way it just i never knew it never like occurred to me it was something that was just something that i never noticed um as eric can relate to me in our childhood randy savage was a black man and no one could tell me different and you know what you felt a little bit of pride you didn't really think about it as in like i can't believe we're getting representation but you didn't think about it but then as time goes on you're like oh wait he's a he's a white another white guy and it's fine i still like randy savage that changed or you know everybody else has going on and then you just go over as time rolls on and you know you watch the nation of domination and even ahmed johnson and stuff like that and their feud and you're going like oh this is good oh we may have a chance to have a world champion. He's an intercontinental champion and stuff like that. And you're not really noticing. And then it's more in your, I guess, progressive years when you get older and more mature, you start noticing like, man, it's been a, it's been a while since we had a black champion and you look at the rock and you go with that, but they never talk about his, uh, his black side or his, uh, the heritage that go along with that. It's more of the, uh, his Samoan heritage that he always talks about. And you always going like, man, I don't know when there's ever going to be another person that represents me in a wrestling ring. Except for like, we watched Impact Wrestling or TNA. They seem to be, they were very progressive in which they had our truth as their champion. And, you know, they would go with Bobby Lashley. It didn't matter the race. It was just a matter of what you could do in the ring. And it was just, it's you know, as time goes on and you realize that, there is so much, there's so much, um, discrepancy and, like, m lack of representation, whether it was film, TV, or movies. It kind of just, it starts to, like, just go over. It's like, man, is this entire world stacked up against us, my people, black people and stuff when it comes to it? And you just go at the time at the time and then... You know, it really meant a lot like when Kofi Kingston won and you didn't realize how much it would mean until it actually happened. And you go like, wow, this is this is incredible. And you may say Booker T, Fire Tie, whatever, but the uh, at WrestleMania, uh, a black man becoming the WWE champion, which was the is is the number one title in wrestling today. No matter what you think, it's still the uh, most prestigious over time right now and it was just like wow that hit so that's where it thinks just over time the more mature you get the more your eyes open the the like you said the innocence the navete i don't think not <laughs> i don't think that's a word but the the uh naiveness of it all goes away so eric what's your thoughts you know me thinking about this subject you know i do not want to be that individual that goes back and tries to adjudicate the past i mean Growing up, um, I was not mature enough to understand what world events was going on. So when I was watching wrestling growing up or watching television growing up at all, it was not a thing about me seeing color, like seeing if this uh, black person, this Latin person or this person was being shown in a positive light. It was more so, was I entertained by this? And yes, there were some people who you attach to, like, you know, like the Ahmed Johnsons and stuff like that. But it was never because he was black. It was just because he was different. I mean, we used to clown him because his tights were too small. And it's like one of those things where it's just that that whole representation. And unfortunately, as 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 Mark has alluded to, it all stops starts with maturity. It's once you reach that age where you mature, and I think it co coincides when you start paying bills, when you get out there into the real world where you're no longer protected in your uh, bubble of safeness because, you know, our parents as growing up, they protect you from a lot of the outside world and know that, hey, maybe the playing field is not fair for everyone. And I can say for me, the first time I really started to notice race and it's really crazy to say this is when the Black Panther movie came out. When that Black Panther movie came out and after watching that movie and seeing Black people portrayed in a, a position of power where they were wealthy, they were independent, and they were in their own environment, 
it was like one of those things that it was inspiring that it really, really brought to the front. Like, hey, man, seeing myself in a very prominent position makes me feel so much better. Now, of course, I'm way past that age to be inspired. But for the younger generations, I can see where the inspiration can come from. And then, of course, being in America, when 45 got elected, it really brought more light of to the double standard playing field where race really became a very focal point where it would be same instances of things happening, but it wouldn't be mentioned because this person is a person of color compared to this person being Caucasian. And I'm not a person that's trying to pit people against each other, but you know, it, it, it is a, a difficult road for a person of color to travel, especially in the United States. So seeing someone actually succeed like a coffee or even, you know, the rock, the rock, you know, technically was one of the first WWE black champions. I mean, they may not acknowledge it, but WWE wasn't really about acknowledging nationalities of people. They were more about acknowledging their characters. Like it was like, it was the rock. And yeah, we talk about his Polynesian heritage, but you're just bringing up the fact that he came from a legacy of a family. I mean, it's not like, they bring up when a Caucasian champion win, like, oh, his unit European ancestry, unless it was Seamus or something like that. And I think like this year, or it was either this year or maybe last year with the emergence of AEW, and you just saw the lack of people of color being on that show and the few people of color that they had on the show, they weren't booked in the most positive light. It really does affect you. So the, the short answer is no. Growing up, I didn't. But now that I'm more mature and I'm more aware, I can see it now. Well, thank, thanks for that, guys. Um, so that that was the first part of this video series that I, we're working on. Um, we'll be back with part two. And we hope that you enjoyed this video and um, share it. Uh, spread the word. Um, there isn't that much of a, a voice in wrestling on, on this topic. So spread the word and uh, we'll be back with part two. Thank you for watching.